Hey, this is Gabe with eSales eBikes, and today we are going to assemble a thousand watt bike. For today's assembly, we're going to need a pair of wire snips to unpack everything, a 19 millimeter box wrench, a 4 millimeter Allen, a 5 millimeter Allen, and a 6 millimeter Allen. These will be the tools necessary for this part of the assembly of the bike. So first stage is, we're going to open the box up. Here's the bike inside. This is how the bike will come packed and shipped. So the first stage is going to be just cutting all the components out and unpacking the bike. We'll get all this unpacked and we'll be with you momentarily. We've started unpacking all of the accessories and we have the front wheel out since that's one of the first things that come out this is an ideal time to get the front wheel inflated as you go through and unpack the rest of your bike and to do that we're going to use the e-cells air pump cordless air pump I have the air pump set at 19 and a half psi for this particular tire and what we're going to do is hook it onto the valve stem hit start and this will automatically inflate and cut the tire off when it reaches proper pressure. Okay, we have the front tire airing up. All of the accessories have been removed from the box. So now we're going to remove the bike from the box. As you see, we have half of the bike unwrapped. We're going to finish unwrapping all the bike. And after we get all the wrapping removed, we'll be able to finish with the assembly. Okay, we have all of the bike unwrapped. A very important thing is in your front brake and shipping is a front brake pad spacer. You need to remove this before you can install your wheel for first time assembly. Spacer removed. Okay, we're going to air the rear tire up next. Same steps as the front tire. Once again, we are using the E-Cells cordless air pump to inflate the rear tire. And we'll inflate the rear tire next. As you see, the pump has reached 19 and a half pounds, where I have the pump set for, and it automatically shut itself off. All right, we're going to take a brief moment and we're going to go over the accessory boxes real quickly because there's things in the accessory boxes that we'll need to have finished the assembly. In your accessory boxes, there should be a set of pedals, a roadside tool kit. This is a cargo net for the back of your rack. We have heat sinks. And inside is also the bolt you need for your front fender and headlight. Very important. An accessory tail light. Your charger. White cord splitter. Literature on the bike. And this particular model also comes with the E-Cells cordless air pump. These are all the accessories that are included with this model bike. And if you're missing any of them, please contact and let us know. This is the double-sided sticky tape used to apply your heat sinks. We're just going to get these heat sinks pre-prepped so that when we're ready to put them onto the controller, that they're ready to just stick right on. What the heat sinks and the purpose of them are is we turn it over and look at it. Kind of looks like a radiator. So this helps remove heat from the controller and it allows air to go through the fins and dissipate that heat to help keep any type of overheating or anything from happening. Just makes your system run cooler, cooler electronics, work smoother and last longer. Okay, now we're going to adjust the handlebar stem and put it in proper riding position. This is an adjustable stem, so we're gonna use a number six Allen. 
loosen the headset bolt, tilt it in the up position. We turn the neck assembly facing forward and make sure it's in line with the forks and pointing forward. Now that this is done, we just need to tighten down the neck assembly. We're going to use a number five Allen. We have two bolts here and here. And we also have at the very top a bolt right here. This bolt compresses the forks. You always have to tighten this bolt first. If these two bolts are tight, this neck assembly has clamp the post and this will not compress. This has to be loose as it is so that we can tighten this top bolt and make everything compress properly. I'm going to give it a couple little turns. That one's tightened down. We'll replace the plug. Done. Now we just tighten our side clamp bolts down. And this headset is now installed, secured, and ready to receive the handlebars. For the handlebar installation, number four Allen, and we just remove the four bolts that hold the clamp on. And now just re-tighten the four bolts with your number four Allen and clamp down. A side note, before you fully tighten and secure these bolts, this is when we're going to set the angle of your brakes. And if you're somebody that likes your brakes pointing more down, just point your handlebars more down. And now we're just going to finish securing the handlebars to the headset. At this point, you should also be able to see that we have a green wire here unplugged. This wire is your display wire. It's unplugged during shipping so that no accidents can happen, nothing can accidentally activate, no damage can be done. So all we have to do, plug it in securely. Now the head or the display is plugged in and she's ready to receive batteries there. We're going to flip the bike upside down next to install the front wheel and the pedals. That is why I have the foam underneath. Okay, important side note. Since we're going to flip the bike upside down, make sure your display is turned down. Nothing going to be more heartbreaking than your brand new bike doesn't work because you flipped over the bike onto the display and broke it. And next is flip the bike over. Next is the front wheel installation and what we're going to do is bring the wheel around, drop it into the fork and paying careful attention that we line the rotor up with the space for the brakes. Now that the front wheel is secure and the axle bolts are tightened, we're going to go ahead and hook up the motor. Remove the protective cap. Note, there is an arrow on the receiving end. There is an arrow. You must make sure they align on the motor side of the plug. Right in front of the white arrow, where the tip of the arrow is, is a small black line. That black line is to let you know that you're fully plugged in all the way. That is not a fully plugged in motor 
and it will cause you problems later in life and possibly destroy the motor. Plugged in all the way is the arrow is basically bottomed out to the receiver. Now with the motor wire plugged in, we're gonna go ahead and just strap this front motor wire down with the Velcro wrap. Our front motor cable is now secured so that it doesn't catch on things. We have a slight amount of loop here, gives it a little bit of play. And next we're ready to install the pedals. Okay, now we're gonna install the pedals. Pedals are actually keyed to the side. We have a left and a right. We're going to put our left pedal on the non-chain side, that would be the left of the bike. Now there's two ways to install the pedal. I started it with my hand as you see. You can take a number 16 box wrench and we can put it on like this. And there's nothing wrong with that. It allows you to apply great pressure to make sure it's tight. But the issue is, is you get closer to your crank arm, you increase your chance of scraping your crank arm with that wrench. These pedals, you can take a number six Allen and come right through the crank arm and crank it down and I will never damage this or scrape it with my box wrench. Just keep it looking nice a little bit longer. Now we're ready to flip this little monster back over, put the fender, the headlight on, and the only thing we have left is to install the batteries, charge them up so that you can start enjoying this little beast like it should be. All right, now we're gonna install the fender and the headlight. In your accessory kit, we had your fender bolt. We're just gonna use the number five Allen and a number 10 box wrench to install. It does sound silly, but if you notice, I'm installing the bolt from the back side of the fender through the front. The reason for this is this way no extra thread is pointing backwards because when all that extra thread points backwards lord forbid something happens the fork bottoms out all of that extra thread bang you got a big gash right here so always have the thread pointing towards the front of the bike and that'll prevent that future damage we have the fender the bolt running through and now we're just going to put the headlight on install the washer and the nut and tighten it down now we're going to bring the headlight up to proper position and finish tightening these nuts and bolts down the fender may rotate a little bit when you are tightening it down, as you see it just did, that's just the force that you're applying. And all we have to do is a little turn back. Now we're aligned. Okay, we're ready to install the front battery. The rear battery comes on the bike already installed. Here we are. Front battery. We have our output. Our drop-in indicator and right behind the little flap here we also have an access port if you needed to emergency power your phone run a spare light and this small one right here that is the recharge for this battery in this model front battery is a very simple battery to install Drop the back end into the receiver nipple. The keys that come with the bike. 
you have two sets. One's a front set, one's a rear set. They are numbered differently. And to remove the battery for the front, we install the key, quarter turn, hold the key in the unlock position, and a light tap from the opposite side, and the battery will drop right out. To reinstall the battery, push right in. For your rear battery, we install the key, will be a full half turn release. Now the battery slides out. To install the rear battery, fully insert till it stops. Half turn, battery's locked in. Remove your keys, that way you don't lose them when you're riding. You'll be very upset if you do. Okay, our rear battery also has an indicator light. If you ever push your rear battery and this indicator light's not working, there's a red toggle switch underneath. Just flick the toggle switch and now the indicator light works. Your rear battery has a tail light. There's a button right here. We just push it down. Once turns the tail light on. One more push turns the tail light off. Right next to that on off button is a clear little glass lens. If you ever see this blinking inside, what that's telling you is the batteries for the tail light are getting low and need to be changed. That tail light and the batteries, we're just taking a flat head underneath, a little pry, and she'll come out. It sounds like it's going to break, but that's just how tight this fits in there to try and keep the water out to protect your batteries. Two double A's, that's it. Last big important stage here. Let's get them batteries charged. We're going to take out our charger. We have our power cord to the charger. That simply plugs into the back of the charger. On the back of the charger, we have an on-off switch. Right underneath this plug is a fuse. This fuse controls power to the charger in the charger unit. On the front of the charger, we have our output cord. And this will either plug directly into a battery, into the integrated charge port that we are about to show you, or into the Y cord splitter. On the front of this particular model, we also have a fuse here. This fuse controls the fan and the output of the charger. There's a couple different ways and a couple different configurations of plugging your charger in. We can plug directly into the integrated port. The charger has activated. We can plug directly into an individual battery. The charger has activated. The, the charger does shut off when the battery reaches full power. We can plug directly into the front battery as well. And now our last way of charging the batteries is via the Y cord. Rear battery is plugged in just like we plug directly into the charger. Front battery is plugged in exactly like it was plugged directly into the charger. And now we take the Y cord and the charger, hook the two together, charging both batteries. We got a couple knick-knack things we're going to take care of while the batteries are charging, such as putting on those heat sinks that I showed you. We're just peeling the other side of the double sticky tape off. Press on. We have a plastic cap, a little rubber cap that's going to go over this bolt. What that's going to do is protect those threads. So we're going to put that on. 
Here it is, the last sticker we need to put on. While the bike is finishing charging, you will get an appropriate sticker with your bike. This is a thousand watt bike, so the motors are 500 apiece. Hence the sticker says 500 watts, 20 miles an hour, class two. The reason this is class two is you have pedal assist or throttle capability but the bike comes locked at 20 miles an hour. No right place, no wrong place to put it. I tend to put them on the top of the controller. And there we go. Okay, here we are. A successfully assembled E-Cells Super Monarch 1000 Watt. All wheel drive, dual motor, dual suspension and she's gonna be ready to party as soon as this charge is done.